Acts chapter 9, you'll find words similar to these. As Saul, somebody say Saul. As Saul was approaching Damascus on, on this mission, a light from heaven suddenly shone down around him. He fell to the ground and heard a voice saying to him, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? Who are you, Lord? Saul asked, the voice replied, I am Jesus, the one who you are persecuting. Now get up and go into the city and you will be shown what you must do. You will be told what you need to do. The men, which, the men who were with Saul, the Bible says that they stood speechless for they heard the sound of someone's voice. But the Bible said that they didn't see anyone so Saul picked himself up off the ground, but when he opened his eyes, the Bible says that he was blind. There's a word for you today. So his companions, somebody say companions. His companions led him by the hand to Damascus. He remained there blind for three days and for three whole days he did not eat, nor did he drink. Keep on, keep on reading. Now, there was a certain uh, disciple of Damascus named Ananias. Somebody say Ananias. Ananias. And to him, the Lord said in a vision, Ananias. And he said, here I am, Lord. The Lord said, go over to the street that's called Straight and go to the house of a man by the name of Judas. And when you, when you get to the house, I want you to knock on the door and I want you to ask for a man who is from Tarsus. His name is Saul. As a matter of fact, as I'm talking to you, Ananias, he's praying to me. See, some you, you miss, you, you, you almost missed your shout. Ananias, I'm sending you to a man from Tarsus named Saul. And as I'm talking to you, sending you to him, he's praying to me. Say it one more time. I think they'll catch it this time. Ananias, I'm coming to you in a vision. There is a man from Tarsus named Saul, and I'm sending you to go and help him. And while I'm sending you to help him, he's praying to me. Yeah, there we go. There we go. There we go. And then, and then, then, then Ananias says, well, 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 Lord, I've heard many people tell me about the terrible things that Saul did. Surely you don't want me to go to the same house to where Saul is because he has been given permission by even those who are in power to arrest any man or woman who confesses your name. Surely God, you don't want me to do that. God, God, isn't there a different way you want to move? Isn't there another way you would prefer to move than to have me to put my life in danger? What are you doing that you would want me to leave my comfort zone and go to a place and ask for a man who has a reputation? Lord, I've been a Christian for some time. I've fashioned my perception and people, I have a good reputation and people say kind things about me. I'm nice and I'm neat. I pay my tithes and offerings and, I, and, and I'm, a good, I'm a good Christian. Surely you don't want me to do something that other people will not approve. People will call me crazy if you send me to go and talk to a man who is killing Christians. Lord, he is responsible for Stephen being martyred. He watched and held and protected the clothes while people stoned. Surely, God, you don't want me to go. This is the Isaac paraphrase version. Surely you don't want me to go and talk 
And as a matter of fact, Lord, surely you don't want me to go and help somebody who hurt me. God, I don't know a whole lot, but I don't think that you want me to go and try to reconcile with the person who is responsible for the wounds that I have. I'm looking at that. But the Lord said in verse 15, go. Saul is my chosen instrument. He's going to take a message to the Gentiles and to the kings as well as the people of Israel. And I will show him how much he must suffer for my sake. So the Bible says, I'm still reading, that Ananias left his comfort zone. And he went and sought out Saul. And then the Bible says that he laid hands on him. I'm going to lay hands. I'm going to lay hands on somebody who hurt me. He said, laid hands on him and said, Brother Saul, the Lord Jesus who appeared to you on the road has sent me to you so that you may regain your sight. This is a word. I, somebody needs this word. I wanted to preach another word, but the Lord wanted me to preach this word because somebody needs to hear this word. He lays hands on Saul, speaks kindly to a man who doesn't deserve it. And he says, God would have for me to help you to regain your sight. I've never been responsible for this, but I'm just going to do what the Lord told me to do. And then the Bible says, he says, that you may regain your sight and be filled with the Holy Spirit. Somebody say filled. filled. Then the Bible says instantly. Somebody say instantly. Instantly. instantly something like scales one by one, began to fall from Saul's eyes. The Bible says, as the scales began to fall, he, Saul, regained his sight. Somebody say a miracle. miracle. After he regained his sight, then he was baptized and filled with the Holy Spirit. I'm going to come back to that. Afterward, he ate some food, broke his fast, regained his strength, and he stayed there with the believers. After he regained his strength, he stayed there with the believers, the disciples at Damascus until he was ready to continue or begin his ministry. Somebody said, Amen. For a moment, I want to talk from the subject. God already worked it out. <laughs> type, 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 type. Look at your neighbor while you're trying to figure it out. God already worked it out. Said it. While you trying to fix it, while you trying to fix it, God already worked it out. Look at somebody and say, God already worked it out. Somebody needs to hear it. Turn to three people and say, God already worked it out. Somebody needs you to tell them that God already worked it out. They came here on fumes and they need somebody to tell them that God already worked it out. We got the ultimate escape or exit strategy on today. God already worked it out. Somebody needs to know that God already fixed it. It's already done. My Bible says that while Paul, while Saul was praying, God was sending provisions. While he was in the midst of praying for help, God had already sent the provisions. While he was asking and trying to work it out, God had already fixed it. Temptation, temptation. Well, how do you tie this into a temptation? What, well, how can you help me understand what God is doing? God already worked your situation out. What if I told you the thing that's keeping you up at night 
The thing that's keeping you stressed, the things that have been impacting your health, the thing that has caused you to go into depression, the thing that you've been stressing, God already worked it out. I have a confession, everybody. I have control issues. I heard my wife over there. See, see, I, I have control issues to the point where I wanted to preach another message and I wrestled with the Lord all day and all night because I wanted to preach and go a whole nother way. I have control issues. And it's a good chance many of you do too. I have control issues. See, I was raised in a broken home, so I had to learn at a young age to be an answer to problems. And so because I had to learn to be answers to a problem or many problems as a young boy, I was conditioned to be in control. So what I had to do for survival at one age turns out I have issues with being in control because I had to be the answers to so many people's problems. I, 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 I have control issues. There's a good chance that many of you have control issues to, I have control issues so much so that I have to look at my wife in my marriage and say, I can't control what she does, what she eats, where she goes. I can't control the decision. I would have cleaned up the house differently. I actually would have solved that equation differently. I can't, you know, we, we are two different people and I, I, I know how to get the answer and the result, but because I know how to get the result, does it mean that it has to come the way that I would prefer? I, I have control issues so much so that even in leadership you have volunteers who come and they do you give them an assignment and they will do the assignment differently and I have to watch them do what I would do differently because I would do it so much easier and you're doing it the hard way let me help you just do it because I know how to get it done so you don't have to stress ah somebody say control issues I have don't judge me online control Issues. So much so that I had to learn and am learning that you can't walk in the spirit of God unless you learn how to become more comfortable not being in control. I have control issues. There's a good chance that many of you do too. If you are a self-proclaimed perfectionist, you have issues with control. If you are a people pleaser, I like to inform you that you have issues with being in control because you don't want to disappoint people. You don't want people to be unhappy. So you will say yes, you will be the peacekeeper because you want to control everyone's happiness around you. Somebody say control issues. If you have the fear of failure, that fear is the manifestation that you don't like not being in Control, somebody say control issues. If, like me, you had to grow up and become an adult before you was an adult, then it's a good chance that you, too, have issues with having your hands on everything. Because I want things to be a certain way untouched I have been if you have dealt with trauma and you have issues with trusting people because you don't want to repeat the trauma that you experienced in your past that inability to trust is the manifestation that you don't want to not be in somebody say control issues if you've ever prayed a prayer to our God and said, Lord, thank you, amen. And you got up and you committed to answering your own prayer that you asked to God or gave to God. It's a good chance, help me somebody. I didn't went to everybody's address now. You have issues with being in control. 
Because you cannot walk in the Holy Spirit and also be in control. You actually have to be able to submit your will in exchange for the will of God. Where are you going, Pastor Curry? See, there's a man named Saul. He's an extrovert. He has a whole lot of friends. Saul is smart. He's a people person. Since you can remember, he's always had a lot of people around him. Saul is smart. Saul, he studied at the feet of a man by the name of Gamaliel. Saul, Saul, Saul. At the heart of Saul's life, he just wants to make sure that people receive him. He's never not been the answer because he is a Hebrew. He can speak Hebrew, but he's also a Roman citizen. Saul has been everywhere. Saul, people love Saul. Saul has a whole lot of people around him. Did I tell you? He was an extrovert. See, he gets his energy by being around people. But Saul didn't realize that most of his relationships, his friendships were surface level. See, Saul didn't realize that it's easy for people to cling a hold of you when you can do something for them. See, so, so God said, I want to use Saul for my purpose, but I have to do something in Saul's life in order to get him to do what I need him to do. So, so Saul arrives to a place in his life where he can no longer do for people what he used to do for him. And so he learned when he now is alone, blind, dejected, needs direction and doesn't know what to do with his life. At that moment, he learned those companions who brought me to Damascus left me. Yeah. The same people who rolled with me when I could do for them, yeah. when I had something to give them. See, you learn who you got in your corner as long as you got things to give them. But when you can no longer give them what you used to give them, Trust you me, they'll show you where they are. And so the Bible teaches us, even when you look at the life of Saul, those companions who helped him up and helped him lead him to Damascus, that's the last you ever heard of them. You didn't hear from the companions anymore because he had to learn that most of his friendships were surface level. He had to learn that he's always being something for everyone. He's the smartest person in the room. And God said, I want to take you to another spiritual level. I want to take you to another level in, in your spiritual growth. But there's something I need to do in your life. He's alone, he's by himself, and he's praying to God. There is a man by the name of Ananias. See, unlike Saul, Ananias is an introvert. See, Ananias, he, does, he has a lot of friends, but he doesn't have a lot of friendships. See, Ananias, he has trust issues. See, Ananias, he, he's very careful calling somebody friend. See, he's been hurt enough, so he's not too quick. He, he, Ananias keeps people at arm's length. I know I'm not talking about anybody here. I mean, people see him. He's, he's a Christian. He's a believer. He, he's nicely dressed. Ananias has been a believer for some time now. And he's comfortable. Every Sunday, go to church, pay my offering, pray my prayer. I'm good. Ananias is in his own way. And God says, I want to take you to another level, another dimension spiritually. But in order to do that, I'm going to need you, Ananias, to help someone who hurt you. Ananias, I know, I know you're an introvert. You don't like to be around people. You don't have a whole lot of friends, but there's something that I need to do in your life and I'm going to interrupt your comfort because you like things the way that you like them. You're stuck in your ways. 
I need you to do something, Ananias. I need you to go to the house over on Straight Street. I need you to knock on the door, and there's going to be a man on the other side of the door named Saul. I need you to request to be in Saul's presence, and when you sit down with Saul, I want you to become his friend. I know Saul can't do anything for you because all the relationships in your life are transactional, Ananias. They do something for you, but now you have to do something for someone who can't do anything for you. I'm going to keep on preaching. Y'all going to come with me immediately. And so the Bible says that he does exactly after fighting with God. Lord, I don't want to. Have you ever had to do something you didn't want to do? Lord, I, I, I don't want to. There has to be a different way to accomplish your will. God, please don't send me to the house of Judas. Somebody say control issues. God chooses to move in the life of two people at one time. God begins to transform both Saul, the extrovert who's around so many people, so many relationships, so trusting, and Ananias who doesn't have many relationships. He's an, extra, he's an introvert. He doesn't go out much. He's very, he's very cautious. But God wants to do something in his life and his life, and he does it at the same time. I said, God, why would you blind Saul? That's what I asked God. I asked God, and I, asked God I said, God, why would you blind Saul? And then God gave me this illustration. Can I, can, I, can I get you to come up? Watch this. Watch this. I said, God, why would you blind Saul? Can you come up here and sit down? This is Ricky, my friend Ricky. Come on, come on. Come here and sit, sit down. All right. Say, hey, Ricky. Oh, you move pretty quickly. Can you get back up and go back down? Can you go, go, go back go down? I said, God, why would you blind Saul? No, no, no. I need you to come back up and sit down again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. I need you to step back down again. Now, can you put that blindfold on, please? And with that same speed, with that same jump, with that same oomph, I want you to come up these stairs and sit down. Huh? Hi, hi, what I said. Come on up here. And I need you to come up these stairs. What's so different about his movement? What? need to hear from you. I, 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 why would you blind Saul? Why would you blind Saul? God, why would you blind Saul? God, why would you blind Saul? I, I said, God, 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 why would you blind Saul? Because I need to slow him down. <laughs> because I need, if I, if I blind him, then he has to receive help. Yeah. The reason you can't move the way God wants you to move is because you don't know how. To receive help. He says, I, 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 I had to blind him because if I blind him, he has to learn how not to be in control. And some of us, our greatest issue is that we have to be in control. He says, so what I needed to do is I needed to create a set of circumstances in his life. So that I will be in control and he would have to trust other people. I'm trying to help somebody. Because what God is trying to do in your life is going to require help. Somebody shout help. There is somewhere God needs to send you, but you can't get there without help. 
He already fixed it. Somebody say he already fixed it. So I needed to do something different in Saul's life than I had to do in Ananias's. See, Saul, I needed to blind Saul. I needed to blind him so he can slow down. But don't y'all see it? Don't y'all see it? Don't, don't, don't. This is what happens. Ananias goes, knocks on the door. He talked himself out of it seven times. No, I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to do it. This is crazy. People think the decision that I'm making is crazy. It doesn't make sense. I'm about to go over here to Judas's house and I'm about to meet a man by the name Saul. That's stupid. God wouldn't. God, 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 clearly you don't want me to do something so foolish. He knocks on the door. Watch this. And the Bible says that he introduces himself to Saul. And then when he introduces himself to Saul, the Bible says that he lays hands on him. And then the scales begin to fall. Take it off. Take it off. Y'all missed it. Watch this. Put it back on. He knocks on the door, enters the house, begins to talk to Saul. And when he lays hands on him, the scales begin to come off. Take it off. Put it back on. I'm going to do it one more time. Y'all missed it. He enters into the house. It's not until after he enters into the same room with his purpose that an administration of healing is activated over Ananias' life. Watch this. It's, it's, it's there, but he enters into the room, he touches him, the scales come off. Put it back on, put it back on. Ananias has never experienced this before in his life. But it's not until he gets in the same room with Saul and that in obedience to what does not make sense to him, he touches Saul. The scales fall off. There is an administration of healing that is activated over Ananias' life. He experienced the power of God. The power of God does not activate until he's in proximity to his purpose. Now, somebody's missing this. Somebody's missing this. Somebody say, get in the room. It's not until he moved. I, this doesn't make sense. People going to talk about me. I'm putting my life in danger. This is crazy. I know people going to be on social media posting saying he's so dumb. And look, look at him. He's going to go help the person who hurt him. That does not make sense. He's stupid. Oh, he I, I, and, and, and he's, he, he knocks on the door. I know this doesn't make sense. But God told me that you was praying to him. And while you were praying to him, put that on your face, he was sending provisions to you. And I know people left you, but I want you to know that I'm here. I ain't never did this before, but I'm in the same room with purpose. And when I get in the room, somebody shout, get in the room. When I get in the room, I'm going to experience something that I've never experienced in my life. I'm going to touch you and then I'm going to see healing happen. Some of us have not experienced the power of God on our lives because you have not gotten in the room. Think about Moses. It's not until Moses steps out on faith and leaves Pharaoh, stands before the Red Sea with his staff that the power is activated. You think about Elijah, 1 Kings chapter 17. It's not until he by faith speaks to King Ahab that a drought is over all of the land. He gets in the room and he, he activates his power. It's not until you think about Peter gets out the boat. It's not until he gets out the boat that the power is activated. Some of us 
are living lives that are mediocre because we refuse to allow the power of God to be activated in our lives. Somebody say, get in the room. So Saul, I mean, so Ananias releases control. It doesn't make sense, but I'm going to get into the same room I'm afraid, but I'm about to help the person who hurt me. And I'm going to lay hands. And then the Bible says healing happens. Let me pause right there. Do notice healing happened before the feeling happened. Don't prioritize the feeling over the healing. Uh, make it make sense. Make it make sense. The Bible says that Jesus gave him Ananias specific instructions. I want you to make sure that you heal him and make sure that he's filled with the Holy Spirit because you can be powerful and wounded. You can have the anointing and angry. You can be gifted and you can be bitter at the same time. So I want you to make sure that you heal Saul before you make sure he's filled with my spirit. And so he goes, am I preaching? He says he touches him and he is now healed. And then he gets filled with the spirit, but you almost miss something. Yes, Ananias, it's not until he gets in the room that the power of God is activated on his life. And many of us, all you got to do now is just get in the room. God already told you, get in the room. Hey, get in the room with what makes you uncomfortable. Get in the room with what doesn't make sense. Get in the room with what you've been praying about with God already. Get in the room and watch the power of God be activated in your life. But that wasn't the only thing that happened, though. See, the power of God activated in my life but healing occurred in your life. Some of us, the healing in your life will not be activated until you get in the right relationships. And I'm not talking about romantic because that romance is not going to heal you. He, people left me, I'm so used to having so many people around me. And so now God has blinded me so that I can receive help. I'm so used to being everything to everybody. But what God needs to do in my life, he needs to heal me first. God could have healed me by himself. But he wanted me to know that nothing in his kingdom can happen until I'm in the right relationships. And so it's not until he is in the right relationships that the power of God heals him. But he gets Ananias in the room. God may be calling you to be an Ananias. Or God may be You might be somebody's Ananias or he might be calling you to be Ananias. And you look at this. Ananias saw the Paul in him when the Saul got the best of him. He was able to come and he saw the future. I know you've been killing, but God has something on your life. And we look at what Ananias does. It's because he got in the same room. Look at your neighbor and say, you got to get in the room. Look at two people and say, you got to get in the room. 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 You can go, you can go, you can go.
God may be in your life calling you to be an Ananias to help someone who hurt you or to help someone who needs it. But the thing about helping is that you got to make sure God sent you. Make sure God sends you. Make sure God empowers you. And make sure the other person wants your help. I just set somebody free. God might be calling you to be an Ananias, to help someone, but your problem is you try to help everybody. Ananias, if you're going to help, make sure the Spirit is leading you. Make sure God empowers you and make sure that the other person actually wants your help because the hardest people to help, the people who don't know they need it, and the people who only want you to help them the way that they want. Ananias, I need you to relinquish being in control because there is a place, there is an intimacy, there is a growth that I want to bring into your life, but you're going to have to learn how to leave your comfort and control. Paul, you're going to do a whole lot for me in the kingdom, but you have to first learn how to receive help. I'm talking to somebody right now. Your greatest issue, I don't know how to receive help. Because the last person, when they helped me, they reminded me of everything that they did for me. The last person, they keep bringing it up and and people, I I don't know how. I've always been help for other people that I just don't know how to actually receive help. And that could be your greatest obstacle. Because what God is trying to do and needs to do in your life, you need help. Lord, we bless you. And God, we thank you. We thank you for your word today, as simple as it is. You remind us that we cannot be in control. We need to submit to your spirit. Lord, we thank you today for Ananias and for Saul. Because, God, there's a point in our lives where we need people to see the best in us, even when the worst has gotten the best of us. But, Lord, we thank you for your word, for your forgiveness. We thank you for what you have revealed and continue to reveal to us. We need you today. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Everybody shout it together.